Welcome to the grab and throw tutorial. In this video, we'll be learning how to give our first person player controller the ability to grab and throw objects. An important note, we are using Unity's default input axes names and configuration. So you can just drag and drop our example assets in without having to change anything. By default, we are using Fire 1 and Fire 2, which are left click and right click respectively. If you would like to change these inputs, be sure to check out our Unity Inputs video. Link is in the description. For this tutorial, I'll be starting off with the first person character controller that we learned how to make in a previous video. There's a link to that first person character controller video in the description, as well as a link to download the character controller. And if you haven't already gone through that tutorial, I highly recommend you do so before proceeding with this one. There are several ways games have allowed the player to grab and throw objects. Sometimes it's the same button, sometimes it's a completely separate button, sometimes it's a matter of pressing and holding, sometimes it's tapping, whatever it is. The method we'll design today is one in which a simple button press and release will grab an object or drop an object that's already being held. But if the button is pressed and held down for longer than half a second, the player will throw the held object. So let's create a new FSM on our player controller called player grab. Calls first state, wait for button. And then we're gonna add in nine new states. So just holding control and clicking. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I said nine, didn't I? All right, and let's name them. This first one, I'll call it Raycast, which is where the player will raycast and store the object into a variable. This next one we'll call grabbable check which is where we'll check if the item can be grabbed or not. Then gravity and kinematic, which is where we'll turn off gravity and set to kinematic so the item can be freely moved around by the player. We'll call this one move to holder, which is where the item will be nested under an empty game object in front of the player. You'll see what I'm talking about in a minute holding, which is where the FSM will wait for the player to decide to either throw or drop the item. And this one will be called drop and throw, which is where the FSM will check if the player tapped the button to drop it or if they are holding the button down to throw it. Drop, which is where the item will have its gravity and kinematic reset and then send the FSM back to the first state. And we'll call this one reset values. And this is the same as the drop state, except it doesn't send back to the first state. Instead, it will immediately send off to the next state, which is the throw state. Here is where the object will have force applied to it, so it can be thrown forward relative to the player's camera. After that, this state will send the FSM back to the first state. So in this first state, in the wait for button state, we're gonna add a get button down action. This time we're gonna change this to fire two, which is right click in Unity's default axes setup. And we're gonna send the event next. This will shoot off to raycast. So in raycast, we're gonna add a raycast action. And we're gonna specify the game object. We're gonna drag and drop our player camera in there. We want it shooting in the positive Z direction. So I'm gonna hit one in the Z axis. This raycast is doing the same thing that our player interact raycast was doing, but I just wanna show you a different way to do this. We're gonna store a bool value for did hit. So in the store did hit, creating a new variable, we're gonna call it did hit. So this is gonna let us know whether or not the raycast actually hit something. Then we're gonna store the hit object in a new variable, object hit. And now after this raycast, we're gonna have a bool test. We'll put this below it. And the bool value we're gonna check is did hit. And if it's true, we're gonna hit true. And if it's false, we're gonna set it to false. So after you've added both of these transitions, you can make it so that the false sends back to the first state and true will send off to the next state, which is this grabbable check. 
Now in this grabbable check state, we're gonna add a get FSM bool action. And we're gonna specify the game object as the object hit. We'll skip the FSM name, but in the variable, we're gonna type in is grabbable. And I'm gonna copy this so I could paste it in this new variable over here. I'm gonna store the value as is grabbable. Same spelling. It's really important to remember how this is spelled, even the capitalization matters. Because what you're gonna do is give your objects this bool value is grabbable. So for objects that you want to be grabbable, you'll set that value to true. And for objects that you don't want to pick up, that value will be set to false. So when we're done setting up this FSM, we'll go and make an object that has this bool value. But for here, we would be retrieving that value from the object, and then we're gonna use the bool test. We're gonna check is grabbable. And if it's true, send it to true. And if it's false, send it to false. False will send back to the first state. And true will send off to the next state, gravity and kinematic. So if the object is not grabbable, it'll send us back to the start. And if it is grabbable, we'll continue to see what to do with it. So in this gravity and kinematic state, we're gonna add a set is kinematic and a use gravity action. So for these, you're gonna specify the game object as the object hit for both of these. And then you're going to turn gravity off and you're going to set is kinematic. Then at the end of that, we're just going to set a finished event by control clicking on the state. And we're gonna send off to move to holder. Our move to holder state will need a set parent action and a move towards action. Set parent and move towards. Set parent will be targeting our object hit. And the game object we want this to be a child of will be an empty game object, but we don't have that set up yet. So let's set that up. Over here in our player camera, see there's our player camera out in front of the player capsule. We're gonna have this selected. If we right click on it and create empty, that'll create an empty game object at the root position of our player camera. And it'll make it a child of it as well. And we can rename this item holder. This is where objects will be placed when the player grabs them. So we can scooch this out in front a little bit. So this is the point in space where objects will be held in front of the player. Now back in our grab FSM, we can drag and drop this item holder into here. So our object hit will become the child of this item holder. Now for the move towards action, we're gonna set the game object as our object hit and the target object as our item holder. Max speed 10, that's good. Finish distance, we're gonna set it to 0.1 and this will bring the object to the center of the item holder. And this finish event will set to next. And this next will transition to holding. In the holding state, we're going to add a get button down action. And this get button down will be set to fire two because that's what we have in our last one and it will send the event next, which will transition over to this drop and throw state. So the FSM will stop on this state where the player is just holding the item now, and it'll wait for the player to either drop it or throw it. In order to tell the difference between just tapping the button and holding it down for a second, is just a matter of adding in a wait action. So in this drop and throw state, we're gonna add a get button action, which is different from a get button down action. And we're gonna add a bool test, and we're gonna add a wait action. Put this weight at the bottom and put this bool test after the get button. This get button is gonna be set to fire two and we're gonna store this result in a new variable. This is a bool. This is a bool value that will be telling us whether or not this button is pressed and we'll have button down as the variable. And then this bool test we'll use to check that button down bool. You'll see that this get button is already set to every frame and this bool test we're also gonna check for every frame. And for its false event, we're gonna select false and we'll add that transition. 
this transition will go to our drop state. So the way this is set up right now is that, oops, that was close. Gotta make sure that says fire too. So the way this is set up right now, it's waiting for the player to let go of the button. Because over here, we already know that the player pressed the button, get button down, sends us over here. So when we get here, it immediately starts checking, is the button still down? And if it's false, it'll go over here to drop. So that just means that they tapped it. The reason we have this wait action, so we'll set this to 0.5, that's half a second, and the finish event will be next. We'll add that, and that will send off to this reset value state. So over here is where the player throws, and over here is where they drop. In other words, if the player pushes the button down, it will send off here. And if they're not still holding it down, which means that this button down would be false, this false event will send off to drop. That means they just tapped it, because this is all happening very fast. But if they're still holding it down, this wait action is still gonna be counting that half a second. And if we get all the way to the end of that half a second, it'll fire off this next event, which will take us to the throw. So that is how you do a button tap versus a press and hold. So first, let's set up the drop state. Here, we'll reset those gravity and kinematic values by adding in another set is kinematic and use gravity, except this time, these will be flipped, so we can already keep this use gravity set to true and this is kinematic set to false. We're going to want to specify the game objects though as our object hit. And then we're going to add in a set parent action at the end here. We're going to have our object hit parent to nothing. When you parent to nothing, that's another way of saying unparent it from whatever it may be a child of. And since this is the end of the road for this function, we'll send the FSM back to the first state by using a send event action. And we have our custom events here back to start. Now, instead of clicking this, I'm gonna go over here to the very beginning, right click, add global transition back to start, which is now here. So it'll send us right back to the beginning. All right, so now let's set up our reset value state. You can pretty much copy and paste everything from here except for the send event part. So I'm gonna copy this and paste it in here. And then I'm just gonna control click the state to add a finished event and it'll transition off to this throw state. Now let's take this one kind of slow and read the tooltip for this action. Transform direction. The tooltip says, transforms a direction from a game object's local space to a world space. Imagine standing in a room with some friends or complete strangers, whatever is more interesting to you. Now imagine you're all standing in different directions. The world space is kind of like north, south, west, and east, because that's the same for all of you no matter which direction you're facing. But your local space is like one of you saying, to my left, or behind me. That's different for everyone. What this action is doing is getting someone's local space, like someone saying, in front of me, and converting it to world space. So if they were facing west, and then they said in front of me, that would be translated to west, because that's what's in front of them. But if they said behind me, that would be translated to east, because that's what's behind them. Does that make sense? I hope so, because that was a perfect analogy. And now that you have an unshakable grasp of the concept, let's set up this action. So with this transform direction added, we're gonna specify the player camera by dragging and dropping it in here. One in the positive Z axis, which is like the camera saying in front of me. So in this store result value, see it's a vector three. So we're gonna create a new vector three variable called forward direction. This variable is the result of taking what our camera said. So it said in front of me and finding out what the world direction is for that. So now we could use that to tell the object which direction to be thrown in. We're gonna add in a add force action. And we're gonna set this to object hit. And we're gonna set this vector to our forward direction, making sure the space is in world space. And we're gonna change this force mode to velocity change. I'm gonna go ahead and copy and paste this send event now from our drop state, throw it in at the end here to take us back to the start. So. Let's run this really quick and see what happens. Okay, so I can pick it up, right? Got it. If I click and hold, it just drops in front of me. 
pick it up. If I tap, it just drops in front of me. And then it breaks because that's how that thing works. But so it is throwing, it's functioning as we set it up to. Nothing's broken here. But what we need to do is give it a little bit more force. This add force is using the vector forward direction that this transform direction is getting. And all this transform direction is doing is setting one of these axes to one. So the force is applying is one unit of force, which is not what we want. What we could do though, is add in a vector three multiply. I'm gonna put this between our transform direction and add force. And here we're gonna select our forward direction and we're gonna multiply it by something like 20. So it's gonna take that value of one because getting a direction just needs one. So if you're holding it in the x-axis, y-axis, z-axis, whatever it is, it's gonna say one or negative one and that's all it gives you. But now with this vector three, it's gonna multiply it by 20. So now when we run this, and grab this box, click and hold, and there it goes. So you can do this with all the objects in your game now. If I click on this crate, you'll see that it just has a simple collider and rigid body on it that just has this use gravity on, really standard stuff. And the only thing we really added to it was that in its first FSM, in the variables tab, we have this is grabbable bool set to true. Now, I want to show you something interesting that happens if you run this as it is. So, yep, you can come over, click it, pick it up and drop it. Everything works fine and I could throw it too, but I'm going to keep it here for a second. And after I picked it up, if I come over here to our FSM and this grabbable check, the get FSM bool stayed as true. And so now, if I come back here into the game and I click the floor, I pick the floor up and now I'm holding the floor. If I put it above my head and click it, there it goes. And the reason that's happening is because this is grabbable is still set to true from the first time I used it when I tried picking up the crate because the crate was grabbable. The way we can fix this is by resetting this bool value. And all we have to do is at our grabbable check, we'll add a set bool value and we'll put it at the very top before our getFSM bool. And we're gonna select our is grabbable and we're gonna have it as false. This bool value unchecked means it's false. So when we get to this point, it'll reset this thing to false and then it will check if it's grabbable. So now we should be able to run this and I can pick this up, drop it, and right click all over the place on this floor without anything happening. We're all good now. In this lesson, we learned how to use a raycast and a move towards and set parent action to grab things, and then a bool test and a wait action to tell the difference between tapping a button and pressing and holding it to either drop it using these use gravity set is kinematic and set parent actions or throwing it using the same set of actions plus an add force and transform direction action. Be sure to check out our other videos to learn all the various features of Playmaker. Links to more learning resources are in the description.